Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and in this video, we have another unboxing from thecubicle.com. In here should be the new MGC Elite. So let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. All right, so it looks like we're greeted with another one of these uh, brown paper bags. And uh, just the puzzle in here. And what else? So in here we have a sticker peeler. Um, and it looks like a note. So it says, this is the MGC Elite 3x3. The MGC Elite has adjustable magnet strength and elasticity coupled with a flexible traditional tensioning screw. The cube has a lively crispy feel and can be adjusted to accommodate a wide variety of styles and preferences. It is measured at 55.5 millimeters and weighs approximately 86.7 grams. Enclosed with this sample is a plastic sticker razor to help with the magnet adjustments, though a small flathead screwdriver will suffice as well. Enjoy. All right, awesome. So this is the latest MGC puzzle. There are, uh, I believe, three of these puzzles in this line at this point. I've only ever reviewed the original MGC, but I guess there was also an MGC version too, and now this puzzle, the MGC Elite. So it comes with a very nice M logo. I think it's actually like machined into the piece. Like I think the M is is out of made out of a different material, but it's completely flush. It's not really a logo. So we finally have a stickerless version. I'm not sure if the V2 is stickerless or not actually. One of the things that I didn't really like about the version one is that it didn't come in a stickerless version. So I guess this can be adjusted in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, it looks like we can adjust the magnets, just popping a center cap off here. Yeah, it looks like it has, it might have some kind of uh, a similar system to the uh, GTS3 and WRM elasticity system. So let's just go ahead and check that out a little bit later. First thing I just want to do is some turns. Wow, okay. That feels really good out of the box already. Feels pretty speedy, uh, very, very smooth. Kind of a sandy smooth feel, probably just because it's fresh out of the box. It already feels really, really stable and the layers feel pretty heavy and uh, kind of top heavy in a way, if that makes sense. So a lot of the weight feels like it's focused closer to the edges of the pieces rather than on the inside, which uh, kind of makes it have this very, um, Slightly blocky feel, but very stable. The magnet strength is pretty light. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how strong it'll get. So I think the first thing we can try is messing with the edges. So here's what the edge looks like. Um, as you can see, there is an arrow on the edge that is currently pointing downward. So what I'm thinking is maybe you can rotate this. I'm thinking that's where uh, this piece comes into play. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Let me just try like a small flathead screwdriver. So here I've got a very small flathead screwdriver. Let's see. Yep, that just turns right around like that. So now you can see the arrow is pointing that way. I wonder if there's a setting in the middle. It kind of seems like you can put this any position that you want. I'm not sure if it'll just over time eventually snap into one of those locations. But uh, let's just go ahead and... Oh, this one's already facing outwards. Huh, that's weird. So that one was not facing outwards. I wonder how many of these edges are actually facing outwards. It looks like they're all facing inwards. So uh, and maybe it just is that one edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and, and move all these around to the other position. So that's outward, outward. Oh, that one's already facing out. And so are all of those. So I don't know why it's inconsistent, uh, unless there's something I'm missing here about how this works. Oh, I get it, I get it, okay. So I was missing something. So turning this one uh, also moves this one as well on the other side. It's not two separate magnets. So it's just one magnet that's connected. So as you can see, if I get the light on it so you can see it, when I turn this, it, it moves this one around as well. So that makes it easier. You don't have to do it on every single piece. So now we'll just do it on all of these, like on every single uh, side of the edge, just, just on every edge, not on uh, both sides. Okay, so now all of the edges are facing outwards, uh, or all of the magnets. So let's go ahead and see if that makes a difference. Okay, yeah, so definitely stronger. Um, not like a whole lot stronger, but I do like the way this feels more. 
feels just a little more controllable. The turns definitely have a definitive click. It's not um, the strongest magnets you're gonna feel, but um, you know, they're reasonably strong. I'm just really impressed with how stable this puzzle feels, honestly. Uh, yeah, it just feels like the layers wanna snap into place even though the layers, even though the magnets aren't super strong. So let's go ahead and uh, see what this is all about here. So what I'm thinking is you can actually do this with your hands. I think that's why they've added these little tabs here. Um, which way does this go? Okay, it goes this way. So there's also numbers on the centerpiece. If you can see that, I don't know how well that's picking up. So here on this red side, there you go. Now you can see it. You see those numbers that are on the centerpiece? So the arrows on the blue piece point to the number and the number tells you what elasticity position it's at. That's very, very useful. Just so you know, you have like a visual uh, indicator of what elasticity position you're on. So right now I'm on one on the white side. So if we turn it, we can just move it once. And now, as you can see, the little arrows are pointing to two. Again, I don't know how well it's picking up. We'll do it on this side. Now, as you can see, the arrows on both sides are pointing to the two position. And it looks like we have six, maybe seven positions. Okay, so there's six positions for the elasticity system. So just so we can see the range of this, let's go ahead and put it to six on all sides. So I really like that you can do this without needing a tool. You can just do this with your fingers. All right, so now they're all on six. Let's go ahead and put these caps back on. All right, so let's see how that affects the puzzle. Yeah, okay, so like I said, the puzzle was already had a very stable and kind of snappy feeling, um, and now it's even more so. This just, um, it doesn't make it feel that much tighter, it just makes it feel even more kind of uh, snappy, maybe a little bit too harsh almost. Uh, the corner cuts feel very snappy. Uh, it'll, it'll have to be paired with the correct tension as well. The tension feels all right. It might be a, a tad bit loose. Let's go ahead and do a couple solves. Yeah, so um, man, this is, yeah, I think I prefer it on the uh, lighter spring compression. Those solves did feel uh, kind of catchy. It almost feels like the magnet strength is actually a little bit high, which is weird because when I'm doing like just normal turns, the magnets don't feel that strong. But for some reason, when I'm turning, it feels like the magnets just wanna pull the layers into place so harshly that it's hard for me to turn fluidly, if that makes any sense. So uh, I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and um, play with the uh, spring compression, maybe bring the magnets back to their uh, normal position. And then, you know, just give it some break in, maybe slow it down a little bit. It is pretty fast right now. So I don't know, I'll have to set it up, get used to it, uh, break it in a bit, and uh, then I'll be back and let you guys know more of my thoughts on the MGC Elite. So now that I've had a chance to use the MGC Elite for a little while, I gotta say, I really like this cube. Before I jump into performance, I just wanna briefly go over what settings I ended up on. So right now I'm on the third spring compression setting, and I've also tightened the tensions about a half turn from what they were stock. The magnets are on the lighter setting, so with the arrow facing inward. I lube the cube with a mixture of silk and mystic, which really helps to make the cube a bit more controllable and smooth. So now on to performance. One of the main characteristics of this cube is its speed. This is a super fast puzzle and it was definitely too fast out of the box, but with the setup I have here, it's still pretty fast and turns are incredibly easy to make, but the puzzle still feels controllable. That also is in part due to the very tactile, snappy feel that the turns have. While the puzzle is very smooth, when solving, the turns feel like they have a definitive click. The layers also feel very heavy and have a lot of momentum while turning, which is probably the hardest thing to control. Sometimes the momentum of one turn makes it feel difficult to immediately switch to another. That can make some elks feel a little difficult to perform smoothly, but Personally, I was able to adapt pretty quickly. Because of this, I didn't feel the need to increase the magnet strength any more than the stock position. This puzzle definitely calls for a more precise turn style, which can of course be an issue for turn speed. I can't really alg spam on this cube super well, as the puzzle will just lock up 
but it's not really locky in the way that something like the GAN X can be locky. Because the layers have so much momentum combined with the magnets, the layers will basically snap into place and line themselves up for you so long as you're not turning at breakneck speeds. So for the most part, locking isn't a huge issue, but it still does lock here and there. I mean, what puzzle doesn't, right? You can corner cut at any angle, just like most other cubes, but the cuts are so harsh that it does make it hard to kind of push through your turns when Alex spamming. So that can definitely be seen as a negative. Personally, I like to have both a really fast and a more controllable cube that I switch between on a daily basis, depending on how I'm solving on a given day. And the MGC Elite is one of the best really fast cubes that I've used in a while. A lot of times very fast cubes like this will compromise on other things like stability, but not this one. Overall, the MGC Elite is really hard to beat in terms of the features and performance you get for the price. This puzzle is $23 and the only other cube in this price range with adjustable magnets and spring compression is the EDM. And I think that this is the better cube. I think the performance is better, it comes in stickerless, and you don't need a tool to adjust the springs, which I think is a really nice feature. One thing I will say about this puzzle is that the logo wore off really fast. I thought that it was like embedded into the plastic, but it turned out to just be a really thin sticker that totally rubbed off within like 30 sols. Another tiny nitpick I have is that there is something in the mechanism that creates a small clicking sound when turning. I'm thinking it might be loose magnets in the corners, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, picks like that aside, this is a really great puzzle for the money and one that I will continue to use. Probably not as my main main, but I'll keep it around if I'm looking for a quick speed boost. So if you guys want to check out the YJMGC Elite, the link will of course be in the description. Thanks of course to the Cubicle for sending me this cube for free to review and for sponsoring the video. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.